Hello again. Um, so I'm going to do uh, two videos in one today. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feed um, this little colony here. So uh, yeah, I've got a piece of uh, greaseproof paper. Um, I measured it. It's one centimetre by one and a half centimetres. Fold it in half. Um, some Clark's Original Maple Syrup. Um, this stuff, it's cheap, nasty maple syrup. It's two pounds for that tub. Um, you dip a cocktail stick into the maple syrup just so that you dip the point in just so you get a little tiny bit of it on the end and then you roll this over the paper and the reason you're rolling it is so that you don't create a little dome. You don't want a dome because your ants might get stuck. In Domes have higher surface tension. So you, you roll the maple syrup out um, now there's one in there already and uh, Lacey and Niger do like to dump their rubbish into the maple syrup. That's what you can see the little black bits in it. Take that out, pop the new one in. Um, worker actually runs down here and tries to, well, get to the sugar almost immediately. But as soon as I start prodding it, she soon changes her mind and runs back. And there you go, fresh sugar for a very small colony. Um, now the reason I wanted to start and show this colony is firstly that the weather is still absolutely terrible and there's not going to be a nuptial flight until the weather improves so I haven't got a, a new queen yet um, to show you raising a queen from start to finish. So what I thought I'd do is I'd show today some of the equipment that I think that you know you should perhaps get if you're preparing to keep ants. And one of the biggest mistakes I see from new ant keepers is that they go out and they buy huge nests and oh look, you know, they, they think that they're going to have a big colony really quickly. Now this colony here is actually a year old. She struggled. But, um, so anyway, this is equipment. What do you need? Well, first of all, obviously, test tubes. Um, I like mine glass. It gives me better film and viewing quality. And I like them big. Um, these are 150 millimeters long by 18 millimeters wide. Um, the bigger you get, the more water they hold, and therefore the less frequently you have to change them. And I get as many, you know, I've got test tubes everywhere because you never know when you'll need a spare test tube. Foil, just normal kitchen foil. And this is for wrapping your test tube to keep it dark. Um, and as you've seen when I was feeding, the foil easily slides on and off, so you just pull it back when you need to access. Tweezers. Long-handled tweezers, short-handled tweezers, plastic tweezers, metal tweezers. Tweezers are so useful. You just use them all the time for picking bits up and manipulating things. Cotton wool, obviously. You need cotton wool for your test tubes, for your bungs, for mopping things up sometimes. Cotton wool, always useful. Normal cotton wool balls that you can get in a beauty part, a makeup section of a supermarket, things like that. Thermometer. You need to know the temperature that your ants are at pretty much all the time. And even if it's just the room temperature, I've seen people posting where they don't know what their temperature is. And it's like, no, you have to. So even just a cheap little one like that, nothing special. Silicone drinking straws. These, this is sort of expensive plastic. They're, they're not the cheap plastic straws that crack. They are um, pliable and cuttable. Um, and I'll show you later what I use these for. But it's to create little, I cut little sections of them to create um, divisions within the test tube so that I can create little chambers. Makes feeding easier. Um, barbecue skewers, wooden barbecue skewers, always useful, useful for prodding around inside nests, moving things, um, just you'll use them a lot and uh, also for prodding the cotton down into the test tube, you know when you first create your water test tube, which I'll cover in another tutorial, but there's lots of tutorials about how to make a test tube. Um, plastic pipe. Um, you get a lot of this from ant suppliers. You'll end up with loads of plastic pipe when you later on start buying nests. nests. 
Ah, PTFE. This is the anti-climb paint. This is what you paint on the side of your outworld that the ants can't get a grip on and they fall off. It's invaluable. You, you can't manage without it. You've got to stop them climbing, otherwise they will get out. Baking paper. Um, you've seen already what, we, what I've been using this for, and look, you hardly need any. There, there's the little section that I cut out to feed earlier in the corner there. You know, you just need tiny little sections of this to pop into test tubes and stuff. Um, yeah, I find it's better than foil, doesn't crinkle as much. Nail scissors. You might want to be cutting insects in half so that your ants can get better access. So you want a special pair for that. Small brush. Again, you get these from ant keeping suppliers, normally free when you order nests and stuff. Um, pipettes for squirting water into nests, but again, you, you tend to get these for free when you order nests, so you don't need to go out and buy them. They, they come anyway, and I get, I've got 10, 20 now. Earbuds, absolutely essential again. You, when, when, they've, when they're wet on the end, you can pick up trash, bits of rubbish, stuff sticks to them. Um, you can roll stuff onto them. So useful for cleaning up, getting in, accessing things. Test tube connectors. Um, later on, we'll, I'll show you when, when we get to this stage, um, when I first connect my test tube to an outworld. And these are just so you can connect a piece of pipe to a test tube. They come in all shapes and sizes from different ant suppliers. I don't really care too much about the size because what I do, I've got a little trick, I wrap cotton around the end like this to increase the diameter so it then still fits snugly into my large tubes which I have. Um, and the ants, they can't get past that cotton, and it, this, this works. So that's my little tip for if your test tube connector is a different size to your test tube, and how to connect them up to a big test tube. Magnifying glasses. If you're going to keep Lacius Niger, and you want to see what they're up to, there's nothing better than magnifying glasses. You won't really see anything with just your eyes. I've got two, I've got that one there, um, and I've got a really big freestanding one here. Um, and both of them have got lights on them if I wanted to, although it does really alarm the ants when I switch the lights on the magnifying glasses. But yeah, get something so that you can see what's going on, otherwise you'll miss so much. Electric tennis racket. Um, I'll talk in another video about feeding ants and whether or not you should buy your feeder insects, but I personally don't. I catch my own with that, <laughs> which zaps them and then pick them up, pop them in. A little bit of sand. I don't like a lot of substrate in my outworld, as you've seen, because I don't want the ants living or digging into it, but they need a little bit to spin their um, pupas this stuff. They love it. Absolutely love it. It's two pounds for 384 mils and well, you, that'll last you a year, two years. I mean, it, and they, they love it. It's just great stuff to feed your ants. Liquid feeders. I only put water in these. I don't feed my um, maple syrup in these, but I do in the outworld, have one of these for the Laceus flavus. If you look at that setup, just so that they've always got access to fresh water. Um, they're cheap; you can get them on the internet. Um, these are just small little ones. Um, bottle tops, rocks as well, which I've um, put into dropped into a pan of boiling water. These are just for popping in later outworlds if I ever need to make a new outworld for decoration and I've got all sorts of bits like this. That's blue tack in there. Blue tack wrapped with a, a bit of um, baking paper and just folded over to make a little bit of a U shape and I use those as just my test tube stands um, for when I don't want the test tube rolling around. Cheap, easy to make um, and very effective. bits of stick. 
that I pick up when I'm walking around. Again, this has all been into boiling water, so it'd kill anything in it. Um, gravel, this is um, aquarium um, gravel that I bought, and I actually separated out the colours, sat by hand separating them out so that I could have contrast with the colour of the ants. And then finally this. This is a nest that I bought when I first started ant keeping. And as you can see, I haven't even yet taken off the, the, the peel because I haven't used it. Do not go out at the very start and start thinking about your ultimate setup. I mean, this is a layered acrylic nest and, and they're a little bit out of date nowadays, so I doubt I'll ever use it. And that is the message that I want people to get from this. Um,